Hey everybody, this is Dr. Kidd and I'm the pastor of Emmaus of Kingsport. We're located at 5842 West Carters Valley Road right here in beautiful Kingsport, Tennessee. Every Sunday is Resurrection Sunday here at Emmaus. But during this specific time of year, we want to wish you and yours a happy Easter season and especially Resurrection Sunday. You cannot explain the services at Emmaus. You have to experience them. Come and visit us. We're looking forward to meeting you. Hope to see you soon. Let's make everybody welcome that's joining us around the world on internet, television, radio, church app. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for that wonderful singing that magnified the Lord today as well. I'm dealing with Exodus chapter number 12 on a subject that I don't think I've ever heard a message on before in my life. Exodus chapter 12 and verse number 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. And ye shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning. Now, for sake of time, let me illustrate what is happening here. For 400 years, Israel has been in bondage to Egypt. God has raised up a deliverer by the name of Moses. He's went to Egypt and he's begged Pharaoh on 10 different occasions to let the people of Israel go. Every time Pharaoh rebelled, fought against them, made it harder for them to leave, and started killing all the male babies in Egypt. So finally, God told Moses, he said, I have hardened the heart of Pharaoh. But when I get done with him, he will let you go. I and my presence and the angel of death will pass over Egypt tonight. And every firstborn from the house of the Pharaoh to the beast of the field, every firstborn will die. The only way the firstborn of every family will not die is if you take a lamb and shed its blood and take that blood and put it over the top of the door and down both sides of the door. And through the night while I'm passing over Egypt to claim the life of the firstborn, if I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the curse of God will not come into your dwelling. But out of everything God could say, to the people of Israel to apply that blood on the exterior of their door trim or door facing, why did God tell them to get a bunch of hyssop? It's spelled H-Y-S-S-O-P. Why did God choose that for them to use as a brush to put the blood on their door? Why couldn't they have used a sponge? Why couldn't they have used the hair from the lamb. There was a specific reason why God ordained it to be this shrub called hyssop. Let me give you an outline quickly to get it out of the way so I can preach. First of all, I want to talk to you about the size of this shrub. It's a small bushy plant that only grows between two and three feet high at its full maturity, and it comes from the mint plant family where we get our fragrance and our smell and our mint tea. It comes from that family. And out of all the mint plants, this is the smallest of them all. I want you to notice the source of the plant. Its native production into the world was around the edges of the Mediterranean Sea region. All the way down to the southern part, up over to the east part, and even over to the north part of the Mediterranean Sea you could find this short shrub named hyssop. Now I want to show you the significance of the branch, of the bush. It not only offers beauty with its flowery stem heads. If you'll go home, you can find hyssop on the internet. It would come up about two or three feet high, and when the stems would come up, at the top of them are beautiful long flowers at the end of them which would catch the eye of anybody passing by the landscaping. But also there was many uses for the bright green leaves that were underneath the beauty of the flower. 
And it was those leaves that God said you were to take a handful of that, dip into the blood into the basin of that lamb, and put it on the, on the lintel and the doorpost of your house. So there must be something about this hyssop that can typify, illustrate, or remind us of the blood of the lamb that had to be put on the door. I never thought in our religious day that I would live to see the day when the blood would be taken out of new translations of the Bible. They're taking the word blood out of the new song books that they're printing now. And they're taking blood out of the choir songs that we sing now. And everywhere you turn, they're doing everything they can to eliminate the reality, the power, and the necessity of the blood. If you had a baptismal certificate over your door, the death angel came. If you had a church membership over the door, the death angel came. There was only one thing that relieved them from the curse of Almighty God, and that was the blood. So this world can do what it wants, but it's still the blood. And it always shall be. Now let me show you some things about this bush quickly, and I'll conclude my message today. Number one, the bold smell that came from this bush, being from the mint family, has been equated to a sweet-smelling turpentine, which was used back in the Bible days to keep people alert. And if somebody was asleep, they could put this under their nose, and it would wake them up. And the aroma would get in their lungs, and it was a stimulant that would keep them awake. This bush would wake people out of their sleep. Did you know sleep in the Bible is a type of death? You remember when Jesus said, Lazarus is asleep? And then finally he said, he's dead. Did you know a sinner without God, the Bible said, is dead in his trespasses and in his sin? And in his deadness, in himself, he does not have the ability to get to God. It's more than walking an aisle, shaking a hand, repeating a prayer, signing a card, and getting in the baptistry. The Holy Ghost has to pass by you and wake you up! Wake you up! And help you understand there is a need and a desire to be washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I know we're old-fashioned here and we're criticized, and I'll take that any day. But I refuse to leave the element of conviction out of salvation experience. If a person is not under conviction, it is impossible for them to ever be saved. The sweet fragrance of the presence of the Holy Ghost has to pass by your way and wake you up and make you understand you need God. The boldness of its smell. Number two, it's the smallest of all the mint plant family, showing us that the blood that was applied to this bush was given for even the very least among us. I don't care if you're a billionaire or a beggar, the blood was shed for you. I don't care if you're a senior citizen or a little kid that your feet don't touch the floor today in the pew while you're sitting there, the blood was shed for you. I don't care if you're sick in your body or a picture of health, the blood of the lamb was slain for you. I don't care if you're simple-minded or highly educated, the blood of the lamb was shed for you. You see, the blood of Jesus leaves nobody out. It doesn't matter what side of the tracks you were raised on. It doesn't matter if you're in a three-piece suit or a pair of blue jeans with the knees ripped out and a t-shirt on. That blood, that blood can reach to where you're at. I don't care if you got beer in your refrigerator. I don't care if you got a needle in your arm. I don't care if you're living in a place of ill repute. The blood of that lamb can go to where you're at and find you where you're at and pick you up. No, oh, bless his holy name. Aren't you glad for the blood, the blood, the blood? It's the smallest so it could reach anybody. Number three, I must hurry. It was one of the most popular plants back in Bible days that they made soap out of. And soap was made for cleansing. God used the hyssop to let us know that it doesn't matter where we've been and what we've done. 
Once this has been applied, all your guilt and shame and filth has been removed from you. You know, I was thinking about this. I never saw this till I was studying this week. Oh, I had a fit in my study. All through the book of Exodus, when it talks about Israel being in Egypt, he said, and they were in Goshen. And they were in Goshen. And Israel dwelt in Goshen. Goshen means to be overburdened. It means to be covered in problems. It means to be smothered in sin. And when God was talking about them being in bondage, he said they were in Goshen. They were overloaded. They were covered in their sin. But the night God brought them out of Egypt, he didn't say I brought them out of Goshen, which is where they had been for 400 years. He said I brought them out of Ramaeus. Why didn't you bring them out of Goshen? Because Goshen means to be burdened. It means to be covered in your sin. But Ramaeus means to be a child of the sun. And I wanted them to know that when the blood's applied, they're no more covered in their sin. They're no more overloaded in their sin. They've been covered by the blood. And now they're a child of the king. <laughs> was made to wash us clean. This blood, this hyssop typifies being clean in the sight of God. Boy, I saw something that, whoa, it helped me. When that elder had to go to that lamb, he had to cut his throat and put his blood in a basin that day in Egypt. And the last thing that lamb knew, he had to be a yearling. He had to be put away. He had to be a year old, and he had to be without spot and without blemish. And the last thing he saw was that elder coming after him with a handful of hyssop in his hand. And when that lamb saw that hyssop, he knew... He was about to pay for somebody else's sin. And the last thing that lamb saw on earth was that bundle of hyssop. You're paying for the sins of others. The lamb had done nothing wrong. When God brought them out of Egypt and they established the tabernacle and the priests would go into the holiest of holies once a year with the blood that was shed and the Bible said he would sprinkle it seven times on the mercy seat of God. It was that same bundle of hyssop that he would dip in that blood and sprinkle it seven times on the mercy seat of God in the holiest of holies. But out there in the open court, a lamb had to die on the altar. And the last thing that lamb remembered before it died was that high priest coming out across that court with a handful of hyssop in his hand. And the lamb knew he was about to die because of the sin of the others. The lamb hadn't done anything wrong. So every time you find hyssop going toward the lamb, it was that hyssop telling the lamb, you're not dying for what you've done wrong. You're dying because of what we've done wrong. And that was the last thing the lamb ever seen. I was reading the other day in John 19 when Jesus was hanging on the cross. Somebody took a sponge and dipped it in vinegar. And the Bible said, out of every tree they could have used, the Bible said they put that sponge on hyssop and put it up in front of the lamb. And the last thing the lamb saw before he bowed his head and said it is finished was the same hyssop that went all the way back to Exodus 12 when God let his people go. And when that hyssop came up before the Son of God, that was God telling his son, you're not dying for what you've done. You're dying because of what we've done. I was reading in the book of Hebrews the other day. And it said that Jesus endured the cross, suffering the shame, but for the joy that was set before him. And I've always preached and I've always believed and I still believe that that joy was God turning down the pages of time and showing us being redeemed through his sacrifice. But now that I've studied this, I believe that joy that was set before him, that word be set before means in his very presence. What brought him joy when he was hurting the most? was when he saw that hyssop coming up the side of that cross. And he knew he was the lamb 
that had been accepted by God and he had done nothing wrong and he was without spot and he was without blemish and God found him worthy and the last thing Jesus knew was he was dying for the sins of somebody else. I was studying the hyssop and I found out that around the edges of the leaves, it's the only bush out of the mint family, mint plant family, that around the edges of the leaves are shredded. All around the edge of every leaf, it's shredded. The other plants are not like that. They're smooth. But the hyssop is shredded. And it comes to a point. Every leaf only has one point on it. Only one point. And when that priest would take that hyssop and dip it in the blood of that lamb, God was saying, I'm going to give my son, and I'm going to let you shred his body. I'm going to let you beat my son. And when you get done beating him, I want you to know one thing. He's going to point you to me. There's only one way to get to me, and that's through the blood of my son pointing you back to me. I'm not talking about Buddha. I'm not talking about Allah. I'm not talking about Muhammad. I'm talking about the blood pointing you to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Number four. Its green leaves would be heated and laid on wounds that were used for healing from hurt and from pain and from battles. Sometimes when military would go out in battles, they would come back and they would heat up the largest leaves of the hyssop tree, of the hyssop bush, and they would lay it across the wounds that they had encountered in the battle of the enemy. And it would stop all infection. And it would give them strength and it would pull the pain. You old timers remember they'd put certain stuff on our wounds and it'd say, it'll pull the heat out of it. You remember that? You get stung by a bee, they take baking soda, mix it with water and put it on that bee sting. And they'd say, it's going to pull that out. It'll pull that stinger, it'll pull that pain. And that's what these leaves would do when they were out in the battle, giving all they got for what they believed in and they'd come back hurt. They'd lay that hiss upon them and say, look, this hiss will not only get you in the blood, it'll not only point you to God, but it'll heal you when you get hurt from the battle. You don't have to die on the battlefield. Get back to Emmaus on Sunday. There'll be some hyssop leaves at the door. Somebody will patch you up. You'll hear songs like, because he lives, and I'll be waiting at the river for you. And some little simple-minded preacher like me will get up and brag on Jesus. And before you know it, you can feel the Holy Ghost pulling all the pain, pulling all the hurt, taking all of that stuff out of you. I was reading this before daybreak this morning, and I never knew this until I read it this morning. But hyssop also produces honey. I didn't know that. Bees love the hyssop bush. And God is telling us that through Christ, you're going to get in his blood and you're going to shred the body of my son and the blood's going to be applied and I'm going to cleanse you and I'm going to forgive you and I'm going to strengthen you and I'm going to help you in your battles. But I want you to know something else. I'm going to make your life sweet. I'm going to make it better than it's ever been. It's going to be richer than it's ever been. Well, I can honestly tell you, I've been saved 42 years, and God has made my life sweet. Number five. The hyssop leaves were boiled in tea and were used to help people digest meat that were having stomach problems. If people couldn't eat solid food, they could drink milk. The milk was fine, Brother Chris, but if you tried to give them meat, they'd belch it up. They, they, couldn't, they couldn't handle it. And so they'd take these leaves and they'd make tea out of it and boil it down, and when they would drink it, it would coat the wall of their stomach and their intestine. And then they not only could eat meat, but they would crave the meat. And that's all because of the hyssop bush and the lamb dying and the blood being applied. I've got problems with people that say they're saved, washed in the blood, and know Jesus. But every time you throw them the meat of the word, they're gagging on it. 
Every time you throw, hey man, you don't have to throw a steak. You can throw a half a slice of bologna into some of you and you gag for three months on it. I don't know if I can take that kind of preaching or not. Boy, that's just a little bit too much for me. Old brother kid, he preaches on the edge. Yeah, I preach on the edge because you bunch of devils live on the edge. I got to preach where you're at. But I tell you what, you get washed in the blood, you get cleaned up by Jesus, you get the Holy Ghost in you. When the man of God preaches, it won't push you out. It will pull you in. If you know God preaching, hallelujah. Preaching don't push you out. It pulls you in. Because the hyssop coats your belly. Oh, I could tell some people will never come back to this church again. <laughs> Let me tell you something else about hyssop I didn't know about. It comes in more than one color. Hyssop comes, the flower that comes off the top of that stem, sometimes the flowers are that long. And they look like a cone. They come in purple. They come in pink. They come in blue. They come in lavender. Just about every basic color that makes up the seven basic colors of our color code, those are found in the hyssop bush. I wonder why God did that. Because God wanted us to know it doesn't matter what color you are. I don't care if you're black, if you're white or like me, I'm so screwed up. I'm Heinz 57. I got so many different freaking nationalities in me. I'm half Indian one week smoking a peace pipe and I'm half Mexican the next trying to jump over a wall and I know I got black in me somewhere down the road, but I tell you one thing, I don't care what color you are. That hiss of blood was applied for you. Whether you're black or white, whether you're yellow or green, they're all precious in the sight of God. I'll tell you something else I noticed. It said that they would take the tea and let it cool down, and they would take a pump that we would call like an aerosol can and they would spray it inside their house because the same hyssop that carried the blood that opened the door is the same hyssop that when you put it in the air it's a repellent and the flies cannot stand it and every place you spray it the flies take off they can't handle it did you know over in the gospel of Matthew when Jesus was casting out demons the Pharisees came to him and said, we, we believe you're doing that in the power of Beelzebub. Beelzebub means Lord of the flies. The devil is the Lord of flies. A demon can be so small, it can inhabit the body of a fly. That's why in Mark chapter 5, the crazy man had 6,000 of them in him. So when you equate, spiritually speaking, flies, you're talking about the devil. And God is saying to those that have the blood applied, the same blood that was shed, the same body that was shred, the same blood that's over the door and cleans you up and sets you free and gives sweetness and peace in your life, that's the same blood that can drive the devil out of every corner, nook, and cranny of your life. I may be a little bit different than some of you, but I don't go around with my bottom lip dragging the ground like a D9 bulldozer. I tell you, he came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. We are more than overcomers. We are on the winning side. We have already obtained the victory. And every time the devil comes around, you remind him of what Jesus did. You remind him of that blood and drive him out of your life. Drive him out of your life. Number eight, I got to hurry and close. I broke my tie and everything out. <laughs> Number eight, matter of fact, I'm sick of this thing fooling with me. <laughs> Tell you something else I found out about his. You can't overdose on it. You can't get too much his. Now, there's a lot of plants, a lot of herbs, and a lot of medicines. You take too much of it, you're going to overdose. But they said you can take all the hyssop you want and your body will only crave more. You know, I'm convinced that blood-bought crowd, they never get too much of Jesus. They never get too much of preaching. They never get too much of church. You can't overdose on Jesus. 
When I got saved, my family said, religion will drive you crazy. I said, it might do it, but Jesus will put you in your right mind. I got the hurrying clothes, but I got to give you this one. Listen to this. It is recorded as a perineal plant. I looked that up. I said, a perineal plant. I don't, I don't even know what that is. So I looked it up by definition. You know what perineal plant means? You can't kill it. Perineal means it won't die. You can cut it down, you can stomp it out, you can dig it up, you can spit on it, you can starve it, but as soon as you turn around, it'll start sprouting again. Perino means you can't kill it. You know why God used that hyssop to put that blood on that door? He wanted you to know that his son was he who was, he was alive, he was dead, and behold, he's alive forevermore. I've got news for this world. They will never, never, never crucify the son of God again. You will never kill him. He is alive forevermore. He's Perino. Let me say this, and I've got to close. The original origin of this plant, if you'll study it, is, is the southern part of the Mediterranean Sea, which is where Egypt was, which is where the children of Israel were. But if you'll study it, it also goes northward. It also goes eastward and northward up the siding of the Mediterranean Sea. That's where Israel is. Egypt's where they were, Israel's where they've been promised. But they'd never been there. This crowd had never been to Egypt. Or they, they'd never been to Israel. All they've known is Egypt. A godless world. But that hyssop that they picked up and applied that blood is the same hyssop that was growing in Israel. And when they would sprinkle that blood on that door, God was telling them, you're in one land, but because of this blood... I'm taking you to another land. There's another land out yonder that I'm going to take you to one of these days. I've got to hurry and close. Notice the blood was put on both sides of the door and the top, but it was not put underneath because God never intended on anybody to walk on the blood or ignore the blood of his son. The blood in the basin was not placed on the door. I want to give you something to think about when that elder walked up to that doorway with that basin of blood and that hyssop, he did not apply it. That's not what the Bible said. He did not paint it. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible said he struck it. Read your Bible, Exodus 12. He dipped that blood in there and struck it on that door. Because God was reminding us, when you shredded the body of my son, you didn't try to smooth it over. You didn't try to make it easy. You struck my son. And through the striking of my son and the ravishing of his body, the blood's been applied, and I'm going to heal you spiritually, physically, emotionally, and every other way there is. And it's only because the blood's been applied and you struck my son. I know what the Bible says. By his stripes we are healed. I know when Jesus died on the cross, he paid for everything, all of our penalties, all of our disappointment, all of our shame, all of our sin, all of our negative life. It's all on him. They struck it. Did you know their homes only had one doorway? So the only way you could avert the judgment of God was to go in that one door that had blood that pointed you to God. May I say to those of you that are visiting, Jesus is not a way to heaven. He's the only door that will get you to heaven. He's the only one that will get you to heaven. There's a religion in this world that I grew up around that believes the priest has the keys to heaven. They teach you that. The priest, when he's not fooling with little boys, has the key to heaven. Now you better act like you like that or I'll say it again. Fooling around with little kids. He's, you know what I tell that crowd? Any man that dresses like a woman and wants to be called Papa and he don't want to get married, I'm not meeting him in a porta potty and telling him everything I've done wrong. I am not doing that. Yeah. 
And all my life, all I heard is, they've got the keys to heaven. They've got the keys to heaven. When I got born again, I saw that crowd. They said, we've got the key. I said, you can have it. I got the door. I don't need the key. Bless God, I got the door. Let's give the Lord a head clap of praise in his house today.